Okay, so I may get a little flack on this video, but I think it's time. I'm getting frustrated with people consuming turpentine because of ads like this. So turpentine is a toxin and I've written some certain things about it and I would love to engage in a discussion on Facebook, YouTube, wherever it may be, to see what evidence people are using to tell people to take turpentine to kill parasites. Turpentine kills humans as well as parasites. So if you're gonna use it topically to kill a flea or kill a, uh, a lice or something like that, then that's okay. But consuming turpentine is not a good idea and I do not recommend it for parasites because it's not creating parasites. This picture is a perfect example of good marketing. This is intestinal mucus and yellow biliary looking stuff. This is parasites, for sure. It's a bunch of them in a glove, but that's not what's coming out of people. Mucus is coming out of people. So let's back up a little bit. First, I did a PubMed search before starting this video, and there is no data to date, as far as I saw, I'd love to be corrected, that using turpentine has been established as a medical therapy to treat parasites at all. Someone link the article, someone show me. So if there's, got, if there's no evidence to it, and I'm not saying everything in functional medicine and everything that I do has proof and evidence in it, but it should at least kind of make sense. And if it doesn't make sense, then it better have some evidence or at least some biochemical explanation behind it. Drinking turpentine does not make sense. It is a toxin, and yes, there's different forms of turpentine, and yes, there may be medical grade turpentine, but I don't care what's medical grade, you shouldn't be drinking something that's considered a toxin by the government. We're already suspicious of the government not labeling enough things as toxins, yet now people are going out of their way to consume a toxin. This doesn't make any sense to me. So let's go through some of the basics of turpentine. Yes, turpentine is harvested from pine trees. This is a natural thing and uh, the trees naturally make it. It's out there for the taking. But there's also poisonous mushrooms out there and we shouldn't be harvesting and eating those. So just because it comes from nature does not mean it's inherently safe. Turpentine is used as a solvent, as many of you already know. It's used to help dissolve oil-based paints. It's used to produce varnishes, and it's used topically to kill lice and parasites. If something is used topically to kill something, that's totally different from ingesting it. Turpentine is also used as a fuel. Back in the old days, it was used to replace whale oil because it was much cheap, cheaper and they were available all season round as opposed to the whales weren't always readily available. It also apparently powered one of the first early Honda motorcycles. So maybe you should rethink drinking turpentine as a fuel source. So it's also added to cleaning products. As you probably already know, it's, it is an antiseptic. It does kill stuff, including humans, um, but it has a clean scent. So frequently it's used in cleaning products and that's perfectly safe as long as you're not drinking it um, or touching it with your regular hands. You should be using gloves or um, some sort of um, stick sponge or something like that. So its vapor can be irritating to the skin and eyes. It can damage the lungs if it's breathed in. And if it's ingested, it can also stimulate the central nervous system. This causes spasms of your airways, spasms of your blood vessels, which increase your blood pressure, and also causes some bowel disturbance. Um, it also can damage the renal system and include it can kill the renal system when it's ingested at high levels. If you read on Google, you can Google turpentine and its damages. The way it's fatal is it creates tachycardia and knocks you unconscious. It causes respiratory failure and then you die. So drinking turpentine, especially not medically grade, is not recommended. I still don't know what this medical grade or food grade turpentine is, but I wouldn't trust it. Now, there is a different version of turpentine, or there's two ways to make turpentine. One is from the resin, and one is called the, 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 the toxic version. But even still, even though there's a safer version of turpentine, I wouldn't encourage it. Um, so I kind of wondered where did this whole turpentine killing parasites comes from and apparently it came from Magellan back in the old sailing days before we had medicine and modern technology. Uh, Magellan used turpentine to save himself from intestinal parasites while he circumnavigated the entire globe. And while apparently it does work, its toxic effects are not worth it. There are other ways to get rid of parasites. 
OSHA classifies this as a toxin with a recommended exposure limit of 100 parts per million over eight hours. That's not much. In fact, if you look up how much lead they recommended recommend is okay to be exposed to, it's not that much further down than that. So if they're classifying turpentine as pretty close to as toxic as lead and other heavy metals, then why should we be exposing ourselves to it at all? I want to go over some of the reasons why this has become a, a fad to do in the medical world, and I mainly want to blame it on social media and lots of things being propagated that is just simply untrue. The majority of things you're seeing in the toilet after you drink turpentine is mucus. It's not parasites. It's not candida. First of all, candida and yeast is microscopic. Even if I took a scraping of something I knew that had candida and yeast on it, I still wouldn't be able to tell by my eye. I'd still have to put KOH or potassium hydroxide on the slide, look at it under a microscope, and even then sometimes it's hard to find the yeast unless it's present in significant quantities. So there's no amount of looking at your stool that's going to help you determine how much yeast you're killing off. So why are people finding mucus in their stool when they drink turpentine? Why do they think they're getting parasites? I'm going to warn you right now that I'm going to show you some graphic images in order to help people understand what it is they're getting. So here we go. So this picture I easily found on Google from a quick search of turpentine and parasites. And this is obviously a self-portrait of someone's toilet after they've gone to the bathroom, most likely after they drank turpentine, but I can't prove that. I have seen other patients who chose to do this and bring, bring brought me similar pictures and I was able to say, nope, that's mucus. That is not parasites. While it may be confusing to you, because I agree, it does look somewhat parasitic in nature, if you looked at our previous previous photo of parasites over here, or parasites right there, they're, they're tubes. They're not branching. See how this stuff has all kinds of branches all over the place, things? That's mucus. If you've ever blown your nose and looked at the tissue, it's got branches and it's spiculated or star-shaped, we would call it in medicine. That's mucus. So why do you have mucus after you drink turpentine? Well, you can find out by simply breathing turpentine or in inhaling turpentine into your nose. Your body's main defense mechanism against a poison is to create mucus because it's burning itself. If your intestines are burning, it's going to create mucus to try to protect itself from the burning agent. So when you consume turpentine, your intestines create a ton of mucus and this mucus is stringy. And when you poop it out, it kind of looks like that in the toilet. It's easy to confuse with parasites. It's not your fault. You've been led astray. But if you really believe that those are parasites, then I'm going to urge you to take a container, any container, one that you don't ever want to use ever again, and collect some of this stuff from the toilet and bring it to your physician and say, I found a parasite in my toilet after I drank some turpentine, you don't have to admit that part, but let them send it to the lab. If it's a parasite, it will be easy to identify as a parasite. But in general, parasites of this size are laying thousands of eggs every day. So if you submit an ova and parasites test, so a conventional laboratory, if they miss a parasite laying this many eggs, then they've done a bad job. Now, it is known that ova and parasite testing misses parasites. That's a well-known fact. But the percentage of miss is something like 75% chance of catching it with one stool sample. If you do three stool samples, you have a 90% chance of catching a parasite. That's pretty good odds. I would run to the casino with those odds. So that's probably a good chance saying that if you had parasites of this size, you would catch it. Now, I don't believe we know everything in medicine. I don't believe we know every parasite out there. But in general, when we're talking about these types of parasites, we're talking about parasites that are readily identified by a microscope. A parasite does not want to just stay in you. It wants to spread to other people. So if it's living this large in your intestines, it's going to be making tons of eggs and delivering them to other people. That's why we do an ova and parasites test on your stool because if you have a parasite it's releasing ova the eggs and parasites more parasites to go find other hosts to live in 
So chances are, if your ONP or ovin parasites testing is negative, you don't have a parasite. You are consuming turpentine, you're killing intestinal cells, and you're creating intestinal mucus in, the, in attempts to try to repair yourself. Now you may feel better after doing turpentine. I've heard multiple people say they feel better after drinking turpentine, and I don't have any explanation for this other than the placebo effect of seeing parasites coming out of you and thinking that you're better. Now, I realize that some of my practitioner friends on Facebook and YouTube and whatnot may not agree with what I'm saying, and I highly encourage you, leave me a message, show me a study, tell me why drinking turpentine is okay, or even further, tell me why it's beneficial. Even if it is food-grade turpentine, then tell me why it's, it's encouraged to drink this stuff. Even if it's not harmful, I want to know the benefit, because something that has zero benefit only has risk, even if it's minimal. Any risk without benefit is not a good thing. Everything we do in medicine is always balancing the risk and benefit. Something that has no benefit only has risk, even if it's minimal. But in this case, I think it's more than minimal. I think we're harming people because your intestines are screaming. They're screaming mucus out of your bottom when you drink turpentine, so you should probably stop. I would really appreciate it if you spread this message, tell people out there there's tons of people drinking this turpentine crap every day to try to heal themselves and they're harming themselves. Please, we have enough toxins in our environment, stop purposely ingesting them. End of soapbox.